And now we come to the message to the church of Laodicea, the last message to the last church. Most teachers agree that this, these messages were to the churches at that time, yet they cover the entire church age. And generally, the message goes from the early church and the last, the church of Laodicea would cover the church of the end times. Like I said, I clearly see, and I hope you see, that in the church of Philadelphia, you have the church just before the beginning of the tribulation. You have the church, that church that has a little power, and he opens a door, and that you have the wedding feast where the groom meets with his friends, and then the door is shut, and they're at their father's house, and they wait for the bride to prepare herself. And in Laodicea, you have the last church, the church that was left here, the church that's here, the church of the tribulation, the church just prior to the tribulation. And he says... And to the angel of the church of Laodicea write, the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God says this. He wants them to know that he's faithful and he's true and that he's the beginning of the creation of God. And he says this, I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I would that you were cold or hot. God doesn't want us just in the middle, in the world, but saying we're a Christian. Oh, I love God, but I love this. I love sports. I love the world. I love buying, selling, trading. I love the concerts. I love the drink. I love to party. I love everything, but I'm a Christian. God hates you to be in the middle. Be cold or be hot. Be on fire for him. Or just admit it. You can't be there. You're not there. So he can begin to work with you. But when you're happy in the middle, when you're walking in the world and you're happy to be there, when you love the world and the things of the world, there's not much he can do with you. And he says, so because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Boy, saints, come on. This is a message to the church. Even if you don't want to believe it's because you'll go into the tribulation, it sounds like it to me. Philadelphia had an open door, and he opened the door, and then he closed it. And what does he say to the Laodiceans, the end times church? I will spit you out of my mouth. Lukewarm water doesn't cook anything, and it doesn't refresh you when you're hot. It's not a refreshing cold drink, and it's not hot to cook or prepare anything. Lukewarm, people use it to vomit. Once you put it in your mouth, it has no purpose. And he says that he will spit them out of his mouth. Almost a sense of vomiting them out of his mouth. This is what the Lord is saying to the church at the end times. You're not hot. And you're not cold, but I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. In verse 17, because you say, I am rich, and I have become wealthy, and I have need of nothing. Look at the church. Look at the buildings. Look at the money that's taken in. Look how everybody dresses. Look how they're all overeating, overindulging, overdressed. Everything's the world, the flesh for themselves, everything they pray for, everything they want. It's not the kingdom of God. It's that they have more money. They have more clothes. They have a bigger car. They have a better church. They have a bigger church. They take in more money. These are all the things of the world and the flesh. They're not praying, God, crucify me with Christ. God, bring me to the cross. God, help me. God, let me give up all that I have. No, they want, and they want, and they want, and it's never enough. And he says, because you say, I am rich, and have become wealthy, and have need of nothing. That's what the end times church is saying. And you do not know that you are wretched, miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked, 
He's had good things to say about people, these churches, these cities, these saints. But the end times church, these ones that weren't taken in Philadelphia, he has nothing good to say here. I'll spit you out of my mouth. You think you're rich and wealthy. To them, they had it all. This is what he's saying. I didn't say it, saints. This is what he's saying. That they don't need nothing. And they don't know that they're wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. They're poor spiritually. They don't have spiritual life. They don't have power and glory like the apostles had. They don't walk down the street and people are healed. They don't have people coming to him and bowing down and crying. Everything's for money and power and glory. They don't realize they're blind. They can't see. They don't see what God's doing. They don't see the times. They don't see what God's saying. They are not dressed. They're naked. They don't have on their wedding garments. They don't have, they're not dressed in white. They're dressed in the world and the things of the world. They've soiled their garments. And what does he say in verse 18? I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire. Those things that I said have eternal value. Those things that come down from heaven that God can give you, the, the work that God's doing in you, your rewards, gold refined by fire. That gold has to be purified. That gold has to be heated with fire. And it's going to be heated with fire for the end times church in the tribulation. That gold, that work of God is going to be purified. That you may become rich. Not that you are, that you may become rich and white garments, not your soiled garments, not your world, not your worldly clothes, not the clothing of a harlot, but the clothing of righteousness, to walk in white with God, that you may clothe yourself because he said you were naked. You need to clothe yourself with him, with righteousness, not with the world, not with religion and that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. This is the end times church. Don't think you're somewhere else. This is the general condition of the end times church, that they're also naked, and that the shame of their nakedness may not be revealed. If you're left here and you go into the tribulation, you're going to be exposed. You're going to be sitting there naked, unclothed, unprepared, covered in the soil of the world. And I salve, because he said they were blind, I salve to anoint, to anoint your eyes that you may see. You need to have God open your eyes. Put a salve on your eyes to wash away this worldly vision that you have. Everything you want is of the world and the things of the world. All you pray about, all you care about is I need this, I want that. We are to give up this life. We're to lay down our life and to be crucified with Christ and to walk with him. And we need eye salve from him that we may see and see our condition, our present condition, and to see what he's saying and to see what's going to happen if we continue in these ways. He says in verse 19, to those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. If he loves you, which he does, saints, he gave his life for you. He doesn't let you just go willy-nilly out into the world and love the world and dress like a harlot and carry on. He says that those he loves, he reproves and he disciplines. For the church that's just caught up in this world and with their soiled garments, the tribulation is going to reprove and discipline them. He says, be zealous, therefore, and repent. If you're caught up into the tribulation, if you're not taken in that pre-tribulation rapture, he says, be zealous and repent. 
And he says in verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, these this verses are always used for the unsaved, for people to come to Christ, for people to be saved. But no, saints, this verse, these words are to the church. These words are to the church. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He's outside of the door. He's knocking. That's what he's saying in these days. And if anyone with ears to hear, with ears to hear. If anyone hears my voice, do you hear the voice of God or do you hear religion? Do you hear the voice of God or do you hear all this worldly internet and babble and chaos, the concerts, the movies, the sports? Is that the voice you're hearing? Because it's overwhelmingly powerful in this world and it's overwhelming the saints and it's drowning out the voice of God for most of us. And he says, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, you're to receive the Holy Spirit. You're allowed the Holy Spirit to move in with you, to move upon you. And if you receive him, you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit and power. You'll be baptized by his spirit as you receive him and let him into your life as Christians. And as you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then he will overflow you. And you will have that living water pouring out of you to a thirsty world. That's what we were meant here for, not to love the world, to crave the world, to pray for all the things of the world. We're to pray for him and his life in and through us. I w and he says, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door and receives the Holy Spirit is what he's saying, I will come into him and will dine with him. He will let you eat the flesh and drink the blood of the Son of Man. You will eat that hidden manna. You will have a right to eat of the tree of life. You will have a right to drink water from the river of life. If you hear his voice now or in the tribulation, because the tribulation is going to get the bride ready for the groom. And if you hear his voice and open that door, he will come into you and he will dine with you and he with me. This is used to get people saved generally in the church. But this is a message to the church because he's outside of the door now and he's knocking. And he's looking for people with ears to hear that will open the door and let him come in. And now... The resurrection, life for the overcomers, because he who overcomes, he says in verse 21, I will grant him to sit down with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. We need to get ready. We need to be overcomers. Whether you're overcoming now and you go in the pre-tribulation rapture or you go into the tribulation and you're prepared, you're prepared as a bride preparing herself for her groom and going to the wedding supper where at the wedding supper you will become his wife. Whether we're overcoming now and we're taken in with the groom to be his friends while the bride prepares herself, or you overcome during the tribulation, and you're the bride that gets herself ready and dressed and prepared for the marriage supper. And we are to be overcomers now, and he'll have that door open for us, or during the tribulation, prepared, dressed in white and preparing for and taken to the marriage supper of the Lamb at the end of the tribulation, where after his bride is presented to him, 
she becomes his wife, and they enter eternity together where we will rule and reign with him, the saints of the living God.